In this video, I'm going to talk about a contribution to climate change that often is overlooked, namely the climate impact of the emission of black and brown carbon particulates into the atmosphere. To begin with, we need to understand the properties of these tiny particles and where they come from. Now, it's been known since the days of Faraday that the incomplete combustion of carbon-containing fuels produces smoke, or soot, that is made up of very small particles that are black in color, and typically less than about 2.5 microns in diameter. That's about the width of a human hair. The actual composition of these microscopic particles is complex. They contain several different carbon compounds. There are three major sources of these black carbon particulates in the atmosphere. About 20% come from the combustion of biofuels, 40% from the combustion of fossil fuels, and about 40% from the burning of biomass. Diesel engines produce about 24% of the black carbon in the atmosphere. Biomass burning includes such things as agricultural burning, wildfires, and fires that use wood and other biomass for heating and cooking. These black carbon particulates have a surprisingly large impact on climate change, second only to the emission of carbon dioxide. Many of the compounds contained in black carbon particles are carcinogenic, and because the particulates are very small, they can penetrate deeply into the lungs when inhaled, leading to significant health problems. Brown carbon particulates also are formed by the incomplete combustion of carbon-containing fuels. These particulates tend to be larger in diameter than the black carbon particles, ranging up to 10 microns in diameter. They range in color from dark copper to light beige and largely result from the burning of biomass, particularly wildfires. In contrast to greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane, which remain in the atmosphere for decades, black and brown carbon particulates remain in the atmosphere for, from only a few days to a few weeks after they are emitted, but nevertheless, they have a major impact on our climate. People have been using wood and other biomass fuels for heating and cooking for ages. So you might ask why they only now are contributing to climate change. Part of the answer lies in world population growth. At the start of the Industrial Revolution, there were only about 1.25 billion people alive on the planet, while now there are close to 8 billion people alive on the planet, thanks to improvements in sanitation and medical care. But with more people, comes more burning of carbon-based fuels for heating, cooking, transportation, and so on. The mechanisms by which black and brown carbon particles affect the climate are complex. The black and brown carbon particles in the atmosphere absorb incoming solar radiation. That can add directly to the amount of heat in the lower atmosphere. In addition, the particles reduce the reflectivity or the albedo of the atmosphere, both directly and indirectly, by making clouds less white. Another major contribution of these particulates to climate change comes from their fallout onto snow and ice. These dark particles reduce the amount of reflection from glaciers and sea ice, speeding up melting. When these various factors are considered, we can get estimates of how much black carbon particulates contribute to the warming of the planet in watts per square meter. The table shows current estimates from both the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, those are in the second column, and NASA scientists, those are in the third column. By most estimates, black carbon ranks second only to CO2 in its overall contribution to warming. And that's really surprising. In the past few years, climate scientists have begun to study in detail the effects that black carbon particulates have on glacier melting and Arctic warming. 
The results from these studies confirm the significant role that black carbon particulates contribute to the melting of Himalayan, Himalayan glaciers and Arctic warming. The chart on the right shows data from 10 different glaciers in the Himalayas. There are two different kinds of light absorbing particles that contribute to this glacier melting. One is just ordinary dust, while the other is black carbon. The top row in the chart on the right shows the observed reduction in albedo or reflectivity from each of these 10 glaciers. The next row down shows the actual heating of these glaciers by the presence of both dust and black carbon. The third row down gives estimates of the amount of water melt that is due to dust and black carbon. The bottom row shows the most important results, namely what percentage of the glacier melt results from dust and black carbon deposits. And as you can see, the contributions are significant for all 10 glaciers studied, averaging about 20%. The black and brown carbon particulates that are affecting the Arctic region come mainly from wildfires in and near the Arctic. Since the year 2000, there's been an interesting change in worldwide wildfire behavior as a result of climate change. The number of wildfires in savanna and grassland areas of the planet has decreased owing to more rainfall in these areas but at the same time, the number of wildfires in forested parts of the planet has increased owing to climate change induced drought and temperature increases. From 2000 through 2017, there were an average of 100 wildfires per year, per year in and near the Arctic. Starting in 2018, the acreage burned in and near the Arctic has been increasing. Many of these fires have been caused by lightning strikes in very remote, inaccessible areas, so they burn uncontained for long periods of time. In addition, many of the fires burn in soils that contain a lot of peat, so they never completely burn themselves out. Since these Arctic wildfires produce both black carbon and brown carbon emissions, Climate scientists have begun to study how much the brown carbon particulates contribute to warming and ice melt in the Arctic. The image to the left shows some recent results from atmospheric absorption studies of brown carbon particulates in the Arctic. Uh, the measurements are a little bit difficult to explain in detail, but basically they show that brown carbon from wildfires boosts the overall effect of light absorbing particulates on warming and ice melt in the Arctic by another 30%. This helps to explain why the Arctic is now warming about four times faster than the average for the whole Earth. I hope you have found this video informative. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments section and I will do my best to answer them. In addition, if you haven't done so already, I would appreciate it greatly if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on my picture in the circle below to do that.